J58 engine. Uh, it's the only jet engine I know, even today. There may be one, but I haven't read about it. It's certified for full, continuous operation in afterburner. A lot of airplanes, like when I flew the F4, you have a limited time you can stay in afterburner. Yeah, nasty things will happen after a while. This airplane, stay in afterburner the entire time. Unlike the, like your Concorde, once he gives up the Mach 2, he just comes out of reheat and he cruises up there without being an afterburner. We stayed in afterburner. We had a big throttle range in afterburner from minimum all the way up to maximum afterburner. That's how we flew the airplane all the time by working the throttles. These tubes, you see three, there's, there's six up total. There's three on this side, and then there's three on the other side. In the early days of building this engine, they were finding out that a lot of air was coming in, too much air was, it was choking out in here, there was just too much volume of air. So they said, let's bleed it off somewhere. So he took these six tubes, bled off that extra air, brought it back here, and re-entered it right behind the turbine section to give some additional thrust. Not much, but it's just enough to give a little more push to the airplane. So again, you can see where Kelly Johnson and his engineers were always thinking outside the box. How can we utilize it? Little expansion joint in here, again, for the heating, just like I said, for the stretching of the airplane. That's what you would see at that break point. This little tank right here, can you see underneath there? It's a silver tank that's on top. It holds a liquid chemical called triethylborane. Triethyl boring, TEV, we call it TEV for short, TEV. So that's our TEV tank. When you cruise this airplane after about, you know, 40, 35, 40 minutes, the fuel internal to this airplane, the JP7 will heat up to about 350 to 360, 370 degrees Fahrenheit. That's how hot it gets. You know, some skin friction and all the fuel being on the skin, it will heat up to those temperatures. Because of the high temperatures, Kelly Johnson had those guys come up with a fuel that had a very high flash point. Now that's what we use. It's called JP7, one of a kind fuel. No one else uses it. Very, very high flash point. I've seen the crew chief show uh, cigarette butts, matches into it, and it just extinguishes. Well, that presents another problem. Some of you probably already know, many of you don't, but in jet engines, we have what are called igniter plugs. Nothing more than a very hot spark plug in your car. But most engines have two igniter plugs, you know, primary and a backup. But when they started this, to uh, try to crank up the engines, front the throttles up, they just drowned out the JP7. These igniter plugs were not hot enough spark to, to light the fuel. So Kelly said, okay, engineers, come up with something. And they did. It was called the TEP tank, and the triethyl boring is a liquid chemical. If I had it in a, a sealed container like that, let's say a squirt gun, I got a squirt gun, I have TEP inside here. If I squeeze it out right now into this air, it goes kaboom. It explodes in contact with the atmosphere. It's auto lighting, if you will. And that's what we use to start our engines. And we started cranking the engines up as soon as the main fuel control lines since the right PSI pointed the engine, we brought the throttle out, cut off up to idle, and it would spray this metered amount of one shot of tip into the turbine section, which went kaboom, and that in turn would light off the JP7. When you took the throttle and went up into afterburner, when these main fuel control lines, these are controlling the fuel going into the afterburner, when they got the right PSI sensed, they would spray a metered amount of tab into the afterburner, which went kaboom, and that would in turn light off the JP7. So it's a liquid chemical ignition system. Very, very unique. You had 16 shots of tab per engine for the whole flight. And it's never been the limiting factor on us. Uh, a lot of people think, well, if you only have 16, you fly for five, six, seven, eight, we've had missions over 11 hours, you're going to run out of tab and never get to the point there. Because every time you light an afterburner, you have to use up another shot of tip. So when you come down, get another load of gas, you have to light the afterburners. Go up, cruise, do your business, come back down. Another load of gas, you got to light the burners again. So we never got up to the 16, though. No.